Okay, so the objective of this video is to provide a brief introduction to the SAP Business One Pick and Pack Manager and to try to just give you a flavor of what's possible within it. So I've opened up the Pick and Pack Manager selection criteria. This is essentially the first window that I would get if I were to go to Inventory, come down to Pick and Pack, and then go into Pick and Pack Manager. This is the, the first screen I then, I then see. So I'm going to look at uh, sales orders that are currently in open status. So in other words, they haven't been delivered yet. I'm going to look at sales orders exclusively. So I could also look at other types of transactions, such as these reserve invoices or inventory or stock transfers. Uh, I could for, uh, filter this by sales order number or a date range, date required, customer. I can also add my own fields in here. So essentially these are fields that, that appear on the sales order and I can add them into the list as I wish. For now, we're just going to keep it reasonably simple. We're going to look at open sales orders, which were generated on the system on the 30th of January. I'm going to sort them by the document number. And at the moment, I have the option here to group by the document. So what that provides me with is a screen like this, which gives me each sales order, one line per order, gives me the customer code. I could show the customer name here as well, but in this instance, I've chosen not to. Um, I have the order numbers and I have the document dates and various other fields, all of which appear blank at the moment. Reason being, I have the option to drill into the uh, transaction level. So if we just pick one here and drill down, we get to see for that order, all of the items that are currently uh, listed on the order. We also, so we have here a column that tells us the quantity originally ordered, what has been delivered to date, what's been picked to date, what's available for release. So this is the actual physical quantities available in stock right now based upon the warehouses that I've, I've selected. So we're looking at warehouse uh, 01 here. And it gives me the option, and it basically tells me that based on the quantities available in the warehouse, I could pick um, the these quantities. Uh, I could pick less, I could equally pick more. Uh, obviously, if it's not physically available, I can't pick it. So that's giving uh, the person in sales, giving the sales rep um, immediate information about the sale, his sales order and how it's stacking up or where it's at in, in terms of uh, what's available for delivery, etc. Um, so from here, the idea is that the, um, the sales rep can then actually just pick off the items that he wants to instruct the warehouse to pick and dispatch on his behalf. So just going back a screen there, we could, um, if we wanted to, rather than grouping by the document, we could choose to show no grouping, in which case we get to see all the warehouses available. And in this database, we have about 20 sales reps working in four, sorry, in three different warehouses uh, in different geographical locations across the city. Uh, so they can choose to filter for their own warehouse. They could even actually put in a, a field here for the sales rep and then isolate for just the sales orders outstanding against them as an individual. But for this purpose, we'll just kind of keep it like this. So we can then actually see all of the transactions listed individually. We still see the order numbers and now we see they're all currently each individual item is listed and we can see what's available. So quite a lot of information available to the sales rep uh, within one screen. And from that screen, he then has the capacity to actually provide instruction to the warehouse to uh, pick those items. So we'll just go back and we'll uh, regroup the transactions. And we look at the uh, order we were looking at a moment ago. So as I say, from there, then I can just tick off the items that are available for me to uh, to pick. And at that stage, then I have an icon down here that says release to pick. And doing that is going to move these transactions into the next screen, which is the released window. So this is the uh, second drawer here. So essentially these uh, will be um, sales orders that were released uh, on the 30th of, the, of January. And we can see quite a lot of lines and we can see different order numbers here. And we can see that each of those order numbers relates to a pick list. And I could choose to view this rather than detailed in each line. I could just summarize, in which case it gets a little bit more manageable and a little bit easier to read for us. So then we can actually uh, focus in on a particular pick. So just pick this last pick here, which is generated by Ryan. There's some remarks in there. That's all fine. So this is kind of a notes uh, for um, the pickers and um, uh, people in the warehouse in general. 
So if we drill in on this uh, pick, this is the type of information that we can see within the warehouse then. So we have the sales order number, the customer or customer code, uh, delivery information, the item codes and descriptions. And then over here we have the quantities that have been released. So as per the previous screen, that may be less than the total quantity on the order if that's what the customer uh, requires right now. So from the screen, uh, what I have set up for this particular client is a little option up here that uh, they can just click a button and when they click that it just puts in the print date uh, and time so that uh, they have a record of that information so we'll just uh, undo that for a moment uh, so once they've clicked that button with the uh, print date and time they can then actually print a physical copy of the pick list so one of the things I've done in the pick list here is I've grouped the transaction according to type. So in other words, when the picker goes out, he can go into the one area for um, the ceramic tiles, for example, the natural stone, porcelain and accessories. Um, I've also subtotaled them. So in certain instances uh, in this database, we could have the same item featured twice, uh, particularly if we're if we're kitting out by rooms. So for example, the same tile or something like adhesive might be used in the bathrooms and also in the kitchen. So the same adhesive uh, product will appear several times on the one order. Uh, we don't want the, the picker having to go back multiple times to pick it from the same uh, location for each room so we just kind of group the whole thing together so on this window then we can see we have uh, the notes and we have the, the the print time and date those notes that we referred to earlier on uh reference to the sales order this pick number and then we have the quantities so in this database uh, they typically sell by the square meter particularly products like tiles so they're selling by the square meter but obviously those uh, correlate then to number of boxes to be picked so uh, we we tell the, the picker how many he needs to pick and we give him a box to actually specify how many he's picked and down the end here then we give him a section to sign off and there's a check by section as well so this ultimately this this physical printout is filled in and returned to the person in um, the um, uh, warehouse office. So that person then has the physical document in front of them and they can come back in at any time and find this sales or this uh, pick list and from the pick list then they can drill into it and enter the quantities actually physically picked. Now they could just hit the button and say pick all if the quantities were all found and to be available in, in the warehouse. Uh, I do see there's an item there actually that it, it, it looks as if it's not available in the warehouse, so that, that might prove a challenge, but that's that's for, the, for them to figure out. Um, so that's all fine. Uh, the next step in the process then typically is once they have uh, selected to pick the items, they get the option then to um, to actually update this and that will move it on to the picked window. In the picked window, then we have a few picks that are, are waiting dispatch. So these picks then could could sit on uh, sit in an area in the warehouse for a day or two or longer, uh, depending on, on what's uh, called for. Uh, but ultimately, when it's time to issue them, we can then actually uh, simply select the um, the um, pick. And from there, then we could choose to create one of a number of documents. So in this case, we could choose to generate a manual delivery, uh, which we'll look at in a moment. We can also look at this uh, or any of these windows for that matter, based on summary or detailed information. So at the detail level, I get to see the individual lines that make up um, the uh, pick. We'll just keep it simple for now. So we just do that. Uh, we set it to um, summary and we choose to pick the items and we click on the create button and choose to create a, a either an automatic delivery which will straight away be dispatched or we can create a manual delivery where we can actually look at the quantities make sure everything is okay and generate the delivery okay so i hope that's been of some assistance um if you have any questions please feel free to make them in the comments and i'll get back to you as quickly as i can thanks